again. We've got to start, guys, with Manchester United. It really has been a roller coaster ride. If we were talking about the positives last week, it seems as though it's back to the negatives again. Ten Hag obviously taking a few measures recently, as we've seen reported, when it comes to not letting some of the press in to his press conferences. He's upset with some of the leaks that have come from the dressing room there. But is he the problem, Yanish? Or are the players the problem? We're going to pinpoint specific players as well. Well, other than the fact, the easy thing to say that players, of course, bear responsibility. For me, that's the only problem. For me, it's always about a manager, always about the general, always about the CEO of a company or a team. Uh, in this case, a manager, right? He sets the tone and there's many different ways to go about it. But, you know, he, he seems to me has a massive, massive ego. And because of that, instead of getting players better, uh, he punishes players. So, you know, it works at times, right? I mean, Ronaldo pretty big ego and he got rid of him. We liked it because it does work in the short term. But then after that, you have to show progress. You have to show that you have a plan and how to go about that. And I don't think that we've seen it. And as it stands right now, I mean, uh, this United team, if anything, it's regressing from last year. It's just that, you know, I've said it on the show before that uh, Ten Hag will be gone this season. I got a little bit worried recently, right? Because they, they've won five out of six, although I didn't know how because it wasn't impressive and it wasn't against great teams. But they done it so you know normally you'd say to yourself if you're a logical person say well let's wait and see uh, but yet you know every time you play the big players um you see that lack of character um and and that's not something that's associated with manchester united so uh you know as dutch teams go uh and players as well we know they're hard and ten Hag is no different from some of the other great dutch uh managers uh but at the very least, you look at at managers that get players better in times of crisis instead of instead of uh, maybe putting them down and uh, running them through the ringer, which is what we're hearing and finding out right now. So uh, more of a punishment than trying to get even the worst players better, because I'm sure we'll get to the likes of Rashford and uh, you know all of that. But uh, I look at Ench Postacoglu and I see a, a manager who has done things overnight for the most part. So their Ten Hag is a, the biggest part of the problem? By far, by far. I, and I, I'll stand here. Look, I mean, you know, I'm not here to fire coaches, but at a club like Manchester United, you have to find solutions until you find the right one. And for me, it doesn't seem that Manchester United is anywhere near getting better from that last season. Uh, and, and you know, here's a manager that picks fights with, uh, you know, I'll get to it maybe in a second, but, you tell me how Harry Maguire all of a sudden is the best defender that they have, because I'll never buy it. You have uh, you have Varane, who's won just about everything. Now I don't know what's going behind what's going on behind the scenes, but at the very least, when you concede, you know, three and four to the likes of Galatasaray and Copenhagen, I'd like to find out. It's not good enough for me to say that he's better on the left hand side. Varane is World Cup winner, Champions League winner, probably every trophy I can even think of right now for it for him. Uh, not to even try him, that's incredible. Jaden Sancho, I mean, there, there comes a point where you have to be the bigger guy. You're supposed to be the teacher. You're supposed to find a solution to somehow let him in. And again, I'm not behind the scenes. I don't know it. But I look at the players. I look at the players that get the second opportunity and some that I don't at a moment where Manchester United is playing absolutely nothing when it comes to football. Zero. They're no different than some of the teams in 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 the second you know sec, second half of of the uh, of the table. Nothing. There's no identity whatsoever about Manchester United. I mean, you know, I don't want to get into Chelsea, but this weekend Manchester United against Chelsea, two faceless teams. We, I have no idea if you ask me who's going to win. Okay, so let's 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 just look at it then, Ryan, because obviously you, you're saying there, Yanish, they no better than teams in the lower half of the table. But as you just mentioned yourself, it was five wins out of the last six before this game against Newcastle. Uh, how? How? Exactly. Okay. How? That's so. so why is that the feeling, Ryan? That. It feels like we can't really give them praise, even though the statistics are saying they were winning those games. But then as soon as it comes apart, like we saw against Newcastle, it's very easy to go, oh, well, here we go. This is what we were expecting because of what we've seen. Yeah. I mean, I, I chalk the five wins out of six up to the fact that the five wins were against all teams that were in the bottom half of the table. They just had a sort of had a lucky run of an easy kind of soft part of the schedule. And as Janusz was saying, it's not like they were winning any of those games 2-0, 3-0. They were winning the games by one goal 
winning games by one goal against bad teams is not the sign of a good team and it's not a sustainable way of playing. I mean, against Everton, they were outshot like 25 to five. And this is, you know, Everton we're talking about. Um, and so I think like with Man U, it's so easy to get caught up in, in the short term, whether it's with, oh, they win a couple of games and now they're back in the title race or no, they lose a couple of games. They need to fire the manager where I think it's just useful to look at the whole and like, they have a negative goal differential through 14 games. Like this is Manchester United, one of the richest teams in the world. Like, I, I think that says everything to me. So that's and, why I'd hide to go on, Yanish. And just to add to that, I mean, you look at Newcastle, I mean, just as many, if not more injuries, more impactful, right? I mean, this is a team that for the third straight game, and it's not just any game, I think Chelsea, uh, PSG, right? And then Manchester United, third straight game, same lineup. I mean, the first half was demolition. It was 14-2 shots. I mean, you know, you, you'd think that Newcastle could be tired coming off of such a game. I know Manchester United are in Europe as well. But you look at that and you say to yourself, how is that possible? It's just a matter in, the, you know, the body language of the player, the want to play for their supporters, for Eddie Howe, for each other, right? Uh, Lewis Miles, young players just flying out of nowhere because they look around and they believe in what's, put, what's being put out there, right? I mean, you know, Eddie Howe is a great manager we all, we all know that, but he finds ways, right? I mean, you know, they don't always play uh, this beautiful football. Very often, as we've seen in Europe, they play long if they have to, but they play for each other. You don't see any of that. And I just think that for the most part is, I don't know, sitting here, of course, so far away, if they gave up on the manager, but it surely uh, seems like that. And, you know, once that seeps into the dressing room, it's very difficult. And yes, it's on the players. Yes, could Marcus Rashford play better? Uh, could, you know, Anthony Marshall finally... <laughs> Right, let's talk about Marcus Rashford then. That's exactly where I want to start because this Ryan has been picked up on the FC show last night. Stevie Nichols been pretty critical of him on last night's show. Let's hit on his struggles here because this is a player who we've seen give the best of himself and do so single-handedly sometimes. Last season, we're saying, can this continue? Can this stay this way with Marcus Rashford for another season? What are we seeing from him now? To, to me, Rashford, like in some ways, the the criticism of him this season, he's like a victim of his own success where he, he had such a hot run last year that he really like, I think we're seeing this year that like the players at Man U, um, they they were probably fortunate. They, they probably weren't one of the four best teams in the Premier League last year, in my opinion, ultimately. Mm -hmm. And they had some great individual performances, whether it's Casemiro scoring a ton of goals or Rashford just like deciding games by himself throughout the entire winter, it seemed like, that boosted them into the top four. I think for me, Rashford, like, he's not... I don't view Rashford as, like, a, one of these attack... He's not, like, a high-touch attacker, let's say. He's not like Mo Salah, um, you know, who you're... He's going to touch the ball 50 times a game. He's going to drive the ball into the penalty area. He's going to create, and he's also going to score goals. Like, he, he's not one of those players. He's an off-ball runner who's very reliant on his teammates to get him the ball. And I think that, like, with Rashford, I, I think he's the kind of player that he his performances are somewhat symptomatic of the team as a whole. So if he he's not getting the ball on the ball as much in dangerous areas, it's because the team behind him is dysfunctional. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't, you know, I don't I don't know if I look at Rashford as a player that's going like single handedly hold a very dysfunctional team like Manchester United in the top four. Um, so, yeah, I, I, he's playing worse than he did last year, but I think he's the kind of player that sort of plays worse when the rest of the team's playing worse and vice versa. So listen to this, Janusz, because obviously people are in the comments giving their views here. We've had Marcus Rashford embodies Manchester United on fire for a month, then disappear for a month. So we're looking at like one step forward, two step backs here. What are we going to put this down to? What's his part? What is going on with Marcus Rashford? Does he have that desire in him? to be playing under Ten Hag? I think Ryan said, said it perfectly. I mean, he has to have, a, have a, a stable environment around him. And there are players like that. And we may not like him. I mean, if I had to say straight up, <laughs> you know, he seems soft to me. He's, he's a soft player. That doesn't mean that he's not a very good player. But for players like that, you need an environment. Right? Remember, you asked me if few months, you asked me few months ago. I'm sorry? Define soft to me in footballing terms. 
Yeah, he's he's not up for the battle. I mean, he's not the type of – we know defensively that's not what he enjoys. He's not the player that he's going to get himself super dirty, right? And he doesn't have to be. There are roles for players. But we have found out that he can finish. He's got the pace. He can be very uh, effective on the right team. But when the team struggles, he struggles. So once you know that, you best finding an environment for players like him because he's not the only one around the world, or you get rid of him. But remember, months ago you asked me – or maybe I've said it that I can see Marcus Rashford playing on any team in Europe, and I could in an organized team. You know, when you know at Real Madrid or some of the best team. If you put him on Bayern Munich, would everybody understand the best version of Bayern Munich? Whenever everybody understands their roles and are willing to work for players like him, who everybody understands what they give you going forward, then you're willing to work for a player like that. But when you have everybody around you fall apart and not pulling. You know their their part. That that's what happens here. So that's where that's where the fight. There's no balance. There's no progress. Uh, there's no identity. Uh, with Ten Hag, I mean, we were promised all kinds of things, but at the very least, hard work and pressing. Well, you know, I think Rashford can initiate that, but after that, he's not going to be the one chasing people all over pitch. I think we all understood that, but I'd be willing to live with that knowing that in behind you have players that truly understands what the manager wants and they believe and buy into that.